Hey, hey, we have returned with more Terra Invicta here, and Audrin just got stabbed. So, right, we see uh, Damien stand up, take out his big old sword, and just ram it through the wood of the chair, right into basically, the like, his, like, kidney It's kind of what it looks like, right? Like, just, like, right into what, one of your internal organs right below your, your rib cage, kind of, yeah, bottom, lower torso, and just sticks it in. What, what do you guys attempt to do? Um, like what's, what's your first reaction to that? Um, 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 <laughs> I don't want to say mine first. I'm like, what, what do I have? The action is, ow, rude. I think yeah, how much damage does he take yeah, I forgot right to now. tell you, Audrey, and you, it actually just feels like a little tickle. No, I'm just kidding. It hurts. Yeah. Um, I think at this point, maybe Vren would speak up. You trying to trying to use a little bit like, no, 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 let's, let's, let's not move too quickly now. Is this really the only way to go about doing such a thing? He's she's been stabbed at this point. I, I... <laughs> wait, who's been wait, who's been stabbed? Did you not Audrey. hear the description? You said Audrey. she. I heard no, I she's been stabbed. I also heard you say she, but I just kind of assume you. Well, meant well I meant. Yeah, Audrin. He's been stabbed with the ch- the gender changing blade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, if, if I if I said she, I I've always like, sorry. I meant to describe. Damien stands up and stabs yeah. Audrin in the kidney yes. from behind. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I think um, he's like. Red says she's like, "What well, was this really?" Uh, oh, only six, six damage, damage to you, much. Jordan. I would probably just like stand up and be like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> right. Yeah. And Vren starts to be like, whoa, 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 let's let's calm down here, right? And then take we, what do you do? Um, I'm gonna use my t- first time I've ever used this, I'm gonna use my tavern brother feet <laughs> to um hit him with an arm arm <laughs> strike and then bonus action grapple him. Uh okay, yeah, go for it. Uh so unarm strike. Mm-hmm. 17. Uh I don't think that hits. I'll like that you. might actually miss. It does not hit. He's a very good armor class. Oh, man. Okay, it says when you hit a creature with an improvised weapon. Yeah. Or wait, uh, with an unarmed strike. Okay, so I didn't hit him. You did not. So, uh, yeah, I basically go for the punch, right? Miss, and then I... I think yeah. he d- he ducks out of your way, still holding onto the blade, and you stumble past him, right? Like, uh, past the chair. Yeah, and I'm in a dress, and- so, you know. Uh, right, no, true. That's probably part of it, right? <laughs> And and he he digs the blade in a little bit, and Audrin, you're like gasping from the pain. You're just like standing there, like in shock. And I think like uh, he he digs the blade in a little bit, and we start to see the the blade start to glow. And he says, "So sorry about this, friend." Um, um, and as a reminder, Damien is like the has been the nicest of any of them the entire yeah. time. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If the blade starts to glow and it seems like something wacky is happening, I'm mm. going to try and attack him. Mm. Can um, I magic the blade. Say again. Can I dispel magic the blade? Um. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to decide one thing. I'm to like, keep in are mind we here. an initiative? Like, what are we I, doing? I don't like, know if you are because this is the Lady of Pain's domain. She could just like telekinesis all of you into a cage or whatever, right? Like, there, you're in uh, the she she is like deity level threat. I think I think you all start to like. Get your fists up, right? And and um, uh, the Lady of Pain says in a very commanding voice, everyone will stop what they are doing now. Let the process complete. And then you uh, and then you will be rid of me. Does that include Damien? He has to stop what he's doing? No. <laughs> and she, she gives you a look and all of you kind of understand instinctually if you f- like disobey her she could just like disintegrate you with a thought like this is her domain you, you're in a lot of danger right now um uh, Audrin, do we gather Audrin. that he's he like siphoning the, the thing or something is he trying is to like kill that Audrin? Audrin I guess it, that's it seems the question. like something is being siphoned out of him then yeah. why not just say that <laughs> I, I think Audrin just I think Audrin just screams out um let him finish <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> yeah, and like it, it uh, is I, I not. Think Audrey goes, you know, Damien. With 
all the times I fought alongside you, I would have thought you'd be a better shot than that. <laughs> Psychic damage. <laughs> yeah, he says, my blade went exactly where it needed to. Um, this will only take a minute, Audrin. And yeah, like it, it is definitely a not pleasant thing to witness, and it's not a pleasant thing for Audrin to have happen to him, but it does not seem like he is being killed by this, right? Like something is slowly being siphoned from the blade. Uh, I think the the um, I think Henry um Henry um looks down at the table and seems like like very uncomfortable by the fact that this is happening, and he kind of like taps the table nervously, and he just says. I'm sorry about this, friends. It, it's not going to kill him. I, I, it'll, it, this will work. And Tanakh and Ronan just kind of look and they're, they seem slightly that like they weren't expecting this. And they kind of like, they're, they're like looking at Damien like, uh, <laughs> I think, um, I think, I think Ren yeah. would just say, Ren would just say, well, you could have said that before you stab, he was stabbed. Um, uh, Audrin, Audrin speaks up and says she's literally the lady of pain did nobody else really see this coming also ow can I yeah, uh, pace and speed this up for myself <laughs> that is not how that works <laughs> I'd like to catch cast spiritual haste yeah so, so I think the lady of pain speaks up at that point and she says she says more calmly now right she says um um this was a necessity. I wanted to ensure that uh, there would be there would be no attempts at keeping the weapon before uh, you left my domain. Um, it is unfortunate that Audrin did not take my offer when it was granted, but this will have to do. I must say I am disappointed. And me? Do you feel it a little bit? It's at least a little bit directed at you. Yeah. Oh no, I tried to help convince him, Lady mm -hmm, of Pain. Mm -hmm. Did you not see my eyeballs? <laughs> she did. It, like she's looking at Audrin when she says this, but like, you know, there's a little wave of it that like a ripple that hits you. No. She hates me. Is anything yeah, Audrin, you feel surge is anything happening with Surge as this is happening? Oh, good question. Ooh. See, that's that's the real question. Um <laughs> I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I, I could like make a save he or really something He really is here. his own person. But I, but I think I think that is what we've we learned from this moment is like Serge even maybe flinches, right? Like and, and like looks at him. And then like as the thing is si being siphoned away, he's frowning to himself. And we can see the the, the cogs turning, uh, right? And uh, Audrin, again, it's not not pleasant, but eventually the... You feel, and, it, and, it, and it's a really sad feeling, right? When it's all finished and, and the sword sh gets slid back out of you and you're like, it, you you get, did get stabbed. It felt like in the kidney or something, but once the blade is removed, it's like, yeah, you took six damage and that's about it, right? Um, but like you feel like before, right? You were very confident. You knew your potential. Something had been unlocked in you. And now it's like you're a deflated balloon. Right, and it's 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 a very sad like feeling of loss that you have. Well, now I feel bad. I think all Audrin does is he like takes a, like takes a couple heavy breaths. I'm sure, and then he just like reaches for Takeley's hand. Aww. Oh, yeah, she immediately comes to you. She's just like, "Are you all right?" You know, like touches your face. Yeah, Audrin just like. <laughs> panting and just like nods and like weakly smiles at her yeah and uh i think surge uh i'm just, sorry i i, I'm, I think da the, the blade that damien had like is like slightly glowing now with this kind of like golden light and he he looks at it and he says well that did something i'll trust you and he's looking at the lady of pain when he says this i'll trust that you knew what you were doing and requesting that and then he like slides the sword back into its sheath um yeah, and the Lady of Pain uh, stands up and her, her dress kind of like shimmers around her and she says, I believe our time here has come to an end. If you have anything else you um, would request of me, now is the time to make such requests. I will, I, I will admit I am not in the mood. Uh, I am not in the mood to offer much uh, now that you have refused my generous offer. I, I will immediately be like, 
look, all we ask, we have some friends who were feeble minded in the pursuit of this weapon. Um, if you could restore their minds. <laughs> you ask as they're drooling out of both sides of their mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, with, yeah. well, for for a lady with as great power as you have, that seems like a small off, uh, a small ask. Go and make a persuasion check, uh, Anna. You can take advantage though, because of your previous history with uh, the Lady of Pain. Hey, I'm scared. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's try. Okay, okay, I got a fifteen, 15. but let me see what's my thing. I have a thing. Sorry, I have to scroll down a long time to figure out which thing it is that has it okay draconic disciple if um does is, does a 15 pass or fail uh i think a 15 will fail okay so i'm going to use my draconic disciple and i can mm-hmm. use my reaction to re-roll the check nice is it a flat roll now or i wouldn't think so because i just re-roll it so uh, wouldn't it still be with advantage? I guess so. Yeah. I know there's... Oh, I know. I'm thinking of my silvery barbs. It just makes them re-roll it. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Come on, do better, do better. No. Oh, so much worse. That was worse. Do you have uh, to take the, the worst roll? Um, or, the, or you take the best one? It doesn't say. What What's the exact wording on it? You re-roll the check. Uh, what's this ability? Draconic Disciple. Like if it UA says you thing, re-roll right? the check, then maybe you have to uh, keep let me it. double check. There might be a more updated version of, yeah. of this. Uh... You re-roll the check, advantage doesn't count, and you have to keep the next roll. Where did you get this from, uh, Emily? The Way of the Ascendant Dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. Um, let's take a look here. Fail. You can use your reaction to reroll the check as you type it into the money presence of the dragon. Once it turns a failure into success. Once this feature turns a failure into a success, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Wow. The way this is wording me- worded means you can just keep rolling it until you... Well, no, because it takes your reaction. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, like, te- I, like... Would okay. have to wait another six seconds to be like, yeah, please. It, yeah, it does not say. That's why I was like, I copied exactly like what I'm saying uh, is the only thing that it says. It should specify. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't. It's kind of dumb. Yeah, it, it definitely should have specified. Let's just assume. And I guess it doesn't matter that much in this instance. It, um, you're, you're, you fail no matter what. Um, I, and then I think a failure. This is this isn't a failure. She won't do it. It's a failure. You must give her something else, right? It's not. She's not. Offer, she's not going to give it to you. She, she, she's like, yeah, give me like two thousand gold or you know whatever. Well, we were considering just paying her to do it in the first place. Yeah, and I, I think basically that's what she's offering you. Um, is like pay the amount you would have to actually pay someone like a cleric to to cast this spell, and she'll she'll do it for you. Greater restoration. Uh, yeah. It's like the spell components cost. I think it's like five hundred for the spell components only, 100. and then oh, it's one hundred. Yeah, yeah, oh, but um, but then it up cost for like someone the fifth level yeah. spell slot prices for yeah. spell casting services. Uh, four hundred fifty. Have to do one, and then he can free the other person. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. Four four hundred and fifty so GP. We'll ha- we'll ha- we'll pay her to do Benedict, and then Benedict can. You're you're muted, Alyssa. Okay. <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just yeah, saying so. we'll do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Four hundred. <laughs> you said four hundred and fifty GP. Yep. Okay, that's like smart of whoever far. whoever's like. Oh yeah, Ben can do the other one. Yeah. 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 That's what we decided using your last noggins. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool, yeah, so you have to pay her, right? It's, she's not giving it to you for free. But like, if you succeed on the check, she would have been like, yes, I suppose you did give me the weapon. I'll give you this boon, right? Um, but she's like, yeah, yeah, pay my spellcaster to do it, and then you can do it. Um, yeah, so uh, th- that is done. It, do- it You know, it, it, she's probably playing up a little bit the drama of the disappointment she feels. She does feel disappointed, but she's not like, 
I think em- uh, Emily Anna can tell with her crit, crit success in- insight. Um, she's not quite as disappointed as uh, she's trying to make it f- seem like. Um, she's a god or something. Uh, this whole to a time god, she so. knows she was going to have it. Yeah, exactly. No she just what. wants. She wants you. She's trying to manipulate you, right? She's just trying yeah. to make you feel bad about like I gave you this great thing and you totally turned it down. Or, you know, like maybe she, her her primary goal in in the drama of this is to make you think twice the next time she offers you something like this, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so you're saying there's gonna be more offers? <laughs> yeah. Um. So I. I am trying to think of so so if you had like uh, done everything and made it so that the lady pain like is like yeah like it feels grateful that you accept their offer and it's like everyone's on on the same page and whatnot if that had been how this encounter encounter went then we it would have been an easy thing to be like okay sounds good and now she's gonna send you to send you to scuttle cove through one of her doors and you can get some companions like there would but I feel like the vibe has changed right and so. I'm curious what you guys are going to do. It feels like you're being not so subtly asked to leave, like dismissed, right? Like we're done here. What do you do? How much do we know about where Scottle Cove is? Um, you know where it is. Yeah, it, but, it, they, we said it would only take a day's journey from our boat to get there. It's just that that yeah. would be much less subtle. Um, yes. Versus well, like just going in a door and maybe, sneaking in. The, maybe no, to be fair. To be fair, Scuttlecove is a really dangerous city. It might be nice to have a place to stay, like on your ship. That's right. As opposed yeah. to like being in the middle of the city alone with no no idea where to stay or go to. Um, like it's not gonna be an e- as easy as uh okay, going to the ex- base. Excuse you, I'm pretty sure I would think that sure, there's you blood could go sisters to the blood at sisters. Scuttle Cove. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's true, I suppose. I'm pretty sure there would be. But yeah, the easiest thing to do at this point would be to just take your ship. Um, I think at this point, Anna, once again, feels empowered by being able to see right through the plans of the Lady of Pain <laughs> yeah, and yeah. understand her every move. So I think I just kind of like push away from the table, scoop back and say, Okay, I think I can understand when we're being dismissed. Um, which door takes us back to Farshore? Um, and she, I think uh, the Kieran, uh, the the dragon unicorn thing, um, kind of just like he, he's now suddenly standing. You, you blinked and he moved, but he's standing in the door at the, at the door behind you. Uh, it's a double door, and he kind of like pokes it open slightly with his horn, and suddenly you see the the street of Farshore beyond. And I just like start walking out and I just like look back to Lady of Pain and I'll, I just am kind of like, um, I guess I'll see you next time you need me. Um, Anna, with your critical 34 insight, you can tell that she smiles under her mask. <laughs> yes, at least I succeeded at something. And I just walk out without without checking to see if anybody follows me. You guys follow her? <laughs> I think we kind of need to, unfortunately. I have a feeling uh, Audrin is following, but like with Takeley, like kind of supporting him, doing the, like the one shoulder yeah. thing. Um, oh. I specifically would love to give the equivalent of the middle finger to Damien and to Nox specifically. <laughs> okay. Caleb? Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a thing he's doing now. That's uh, that's probably um, my fire, like my fire Genasi, you know, so, version of it. So, yeah, you know, they can, is, they yeah. can roll history checks to see if they understand what I did. <laughs> I, think but, you know. I think they know. <laughs> this, this is a, this is you know. a, we had a feast, right? There was like a, was there yeah, actually there was like, there. Yeah. Was there silverware there? Sure. I take you a spoon. Know, you try to take a spoon. Okay. I'm just um, like, just do sure, I do, sure, can, yeah. Make a slide of hand Because here's the thing. Teleport. If I can get right. back onto this yeah, plane, yeah. I can get here. <laughs> yeah, make make a sleight of hand check. Uh, I'm decent at sleight of hand. I'm pretty good at sleight of hand. Yeah, well, I was gonna say you have telekinesis. Uh, I do. It's more telekinetic. It's more like I can push someone if I want to. Mm. Oh, well, you push a twenty-seven into your pocket. Neither the Lady of Pain nor her Kieran bodyguard nor anyone else in the room uh, seems to notice or uh, interact with you because you did this. So I'll just steal a spoon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. 
Uh, yeah. So um, before, so you, you uh, Alyssa, you you give them the middle finger or whatever, right? And I think um, Damien um frowns at that and then like walks over and grabs your arm um to try to like stop you and and like talk to you before you leave. Try to brush him off or. I shrug him off and I'm like, there's nothing to say. He frowns and he says, um. It's fine that if your loyalty is burnt with us, I get it. We weren't exactly friends. But it's clear where your loyalties lie, and that's unfortunate. He he frowns and he says, I didn't kill Audrin. There was no care. plan. There was no plan to kill him or harm him beyond I don't care. mere pain. I don't care. You took away something of him. You took away something that he said made him feel whole. And I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. Ronan uh, laughs. He says, it wasn't his to begin with. Oh, come now, take we. We all know what was going to happen. He's like still sitting down, like Audrin, kind of Audrin leaning says, back in yeah, his chair. What happened is I got it because you guys failed your jobs to do it in the first place. And then they yeah. walk away. <laughs> yeah, Ron Ronan is just shaking his head. Um, I think uh, Tanakh and Henry are the ones who look the most like troubled by this and they look they wanted to say something as you guys walk away but don't have a chance to and then uh damien you know he lets you guys go and we, but we stay the camera stays with him a little bit after you guys leave and he turns back and to the others and ronan just like gives him a shrug like i understand why he had to do it like and it's fine and uh but henry like gives him a look and damien meets the look and says um i ha i've always had one goal henry and that's to and that's to destroy the Crimson Fleet, um, to make them pay for what they did to me. Um, the Lady of Pain has ensured me that this will do that. That's all I care about. And then he walks away. Did wait? Who who said this? Who said this again? Damien. Did the swap? The swap. Any of us guy. hear that? No. This is after you guys all left. Okay. 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 Um, after we walk through and like we're back through on the other side, um. Audrin says to take we I'm not so weak and he's like says and like under like like pauses and is like oh I'm, I'm actually like physically weak right now and he like chuckles a little bit and he says I'm not so weak that I need some magic temple boon um to be I don't know I want to say something less cheesy than the best version of myself but that's kind of the mm. vibe to be whole yeah I'm not so weak that I need uh, some magic temple boon to be whole. And Tiffany yeah, and Audra just like Good. shakes her head and she just says, I never called you weak. No, no, no. I, I don't think, and Audra doesn't mean it like that, but like, I, I think the implication is like the Lady of Pain thinks she needs it. Audra doesn't need it. Audrin's confident and like, I, okay. I, I'm fine. I don't need that. I, so I, like, I, I got you, but I think Takewe will just say like, I think you proved that you're not weak by not giving in to that kind of a woman. And thank you for proving that to me today. And I'm sorry that you got stabbed because of me. Honor's <laughs> like, I didn't get stabbed because of you. Think of all the people that didn't get stabbed because of you. Also, she was trying to offer me everything she thought that I wanted, but I already had you. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, Audrin, you're you're probably fine, feeling relatively fine. The 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 only the only real weakness you feel right now is just the absence of what you had before, more than anything else, right? It's just you feel less sure of yourself, and your footing is a little bit less sure, just because you're so used to being full before. Yeah, I think this does bring up an interesting question, though, Audrey. Well, this is an interesting oh. question. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I literally, you literally said it right <laughs> as I was thinking it and said it, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you, this does bring up an interesting question, Audrey. And then when we'll, we walk over to the Surge, just go dum dum. He's still here. Surge, and that's nods. exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Surge nods, and he says, "I." Uh, I had a list of questions I was going to ask you, Audrin. Uh, I had them all in my head, but I don't think I can deny it anymore. 
the whole the whole times he is saying this, Vren's just like poking and prodding him, and like looking. He tries to still working. <laughs> he's he says, "I I must be something unique, right? I can't just be a, a spark from your flame." Either that, or the Lady of Pain didn't get all of what she wanted. And couldn't, in fact, take it. <laughs> yeah, search for Audrin, Audrin puts, puts an arm on him and says, Serge, I think in the same way that I am a spark of the flame of my parents, but I'm not my parents, you are your own person. Audrin, when you say that, you have, suddenly have a vivid memory of like fire and your village, your your town burning, um, a dragonborn's face um, as he killed a childhood friend of yours. Uh, you just get a vivid flashback of the day that the Crimson Fleet destroyed your hometown. Audrin's like, oh, uh, uh, I, uh... Huh. I wasn't prepared for those repressed memories. <laughs> like, kind of to himself, like really quiet. Yep. Just like, oh, I wasn't really prepared for that. Um, uh, he's like, by the way, clearly uh, shaken by it, but uh, tries to hide it. Actually, no, he, he does hide it. He's very shaken by it, but he definitely hides it. Yeah. Um, while this is entire has has gone on, like we saw you guys like walk out of some random door in Far Shore, right, and like a, a go onto the street. And I think the entire time you've been having this conversation, we've been out of focus. Uh, with, there's been a person, like a random villager, who's just like was looking around, like where do they what, <laughs> just like trying to figure out like where you guys came from. It's like we walked out of their house, <laughs> right? Exactly something like that, or like a barn that doesn't have any room for like a, or some 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 like. Uh, maybe it's like the, like a pantry or something that was like full of stuff and like impossible that all like five of you or six, seven of you because of Benedict and Nolan like could have fit in that house or something, right? Like, yeah. But yeah, we can we can assume that like you know, we can skip ahead and Benedict and um, Nolan are on. Hello, Benedict and Nolan. I want to talk to Nolan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get they get healed mm. and and whatnot. Um, I'm assuming. Look, I think what, probably the easiest way to do this is to skip forward a little bit and and have let me. You guys are at the chapel now, and um, Nolan has kind of come back to himself, and Benedict and him are both kind of dressed once more in their normal clothes and have other stuff and whatnot. Um, and uh, uh question: <laughs> Am I still in a dress? Um, I, I, I think, um, we can probably say that like all your, all your fine finery that was, I guess you were the only one who had finery that was given, by, given to you. Um, I don't know. When I go through the door, is it just like, I just, that, that's what I was wondering. Clothes? Is he? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Let's, let's just say that. I mean, that's fine with me. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. care. I don't care too much. I was just curious. Yeah. Let's let's do that. Everyone else was wearing clothes that they actually owned, but. We'll say you're like, away. That's for your style anyway. But yeah, so so Nolan uh is yeah, like kind of seated on one of the pews and has been caught caught up on things. You know, Vincent Catherly has, has caught him up on stuff and, and Benedict and whatnot. Um and he as you guys walk into the chapel, um, he says he stands and goes over to like Audrin, maybe and like shakes his hand, says, Thank you all for saving me from that place. Uh, Vincent and Benedict have informed me of what has happened in my absence, and I must say that I was a fool. The important thing is you're back now. Yeah, uh, he says, I, um, I went to the temple for a particular purpose. Please tell me, did anything come of my quest? What? Did you find the weapon? So, about that. And then we just, you fill him in on everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got stabbed. Right, yeah, so did you tell him about the Lady of Pain and stuff? I mean, I don't think we have any reason not to. Mm-hmm. Does anyone else oppose? 
a reason not He's, to. Yeah. He seems confused about something. Like he he says, "I don't blame you for how that went down, but I I do wonder how did you manage to get into that situation in the first place." He looks at you, Anna. Uh, what connection did you have to this lady of pain before this all started? How did you know these agents of hers? It's more like the lady of pain knows us. Um, I just am like, I met one of them very briefly in Calabar, but I didn't really know him. And then the other ones, the Lady of Pain, like, reached out to me with a door and I went through it and then met Ronan. I see. (sighs) More extra planter beans playing with the lives of mortals. Yeah. Uh. He says, well, we have work to do here, even despite uh, the work, uh, the, the, the victory that you won on the Isle of Dread. I will leave you to uh, what you've all been doing already. So Benedict tells me, um, I will help Vincent make sure that the Isle of Dread <laughs> is made once more into a place that will forever be free of the demonic influence of Demogorgon. And maybe once that happens, consider, like, maybe could we rename the Isle? Like, I don't know. I was know. just thinking the same thing. Can we <laughs> name it the Isle of Bread? <laughs> he, he he laughs. Um, yes, Unless, yes, I suppose. Like, I feel like the, the people who live there, like, I don't know. I wouldn't think that they would have a, <laughs> the, uh, the natives... great, a great attachment to the name yeah. Isle of Dread. Yeah, he says the natives have a different name for it. That's simply what is what it was called on a map. Uh, the legends. But yes, it is probably good to leave that moniker behind. There's still much work to be done here among the natives. and I, I wish that we still had that. Now that you've told me what, the, what it is, the weapon. I wish that we could have used it to help the people here, but maybe. Really anyway. If we still have the robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but he, he didn't understand that part of it, right? So he, he, he's just like, oh, fair enough. he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on what I can do and I'm, I'm going to help the people here and, and you, you do your thing. Um, but he says like, if you ever need anything of me uh, or um, my followers, you know where to find us. I think the I asked them. Prayers but... would definitely be nice. Yeah, he yeah, says, but... I will offer up some every day if I can. Um, Audrin says, Can you just like keep an eye on the, um, the Avner clan? Mm, the Maravanchis? Yeah. Yes, uh, Vincent was telling me something about what has been happening. You worry that he is not a good leader? <laughs> oh, sorry, that was out loud. Um, <laughs> Audrin says I'm, I must confess that I did not have not spent much time in Farshore I'm un- unaware of the political situation yeah Audrin, Audrin says let's just say he will be a great leader for himself hmm. well we'll have we'll just have to make sure that his self interest lines up with the interests of Farshore yes he's a he's a leader for now that enough of Farshore will be willing to follow and trust in that it shouldn't all fall into complete chaos while we try and find Lavinia. Very well. So- but I'll but do that being, as soon as we find Lavinia or say like a very smart dog to replace him, that would be best to do. Uh, you mean... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, to replace Mithla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's essentially yeah. just insulting them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he smiles uh, tolerantly and, and then says, uh, well, I won't keep you any longer. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to ask them, but uh, I don't want to keep you from your important mission. Um, Audrin, like before they get going or do too much else, Audrin takes some time to uh, go in the chapel and do some prayers, update Miggy on everything that's happened. Was I supposed to like ask him anything or like tell him anything? I was just supposed to find him, right? Yeah, just to find him. Right? Like, okay. and, and and a lot of it was like he had a particular mission to go find the weapon. And he had stuff he was doing, but like that's not like now. Uh, since you found him after 
after you've done everything else, there isn't much to follow up with him on. I was like, I didn't think there was really... He's going to keep doing his thing, and now that you've freed the island from demons, he'll be Mm -hmm. able to do it a lot better than he was able to do do, do it before, so. Yeah, um, I... One thing you could follow up with him on, actually, is technically the whole... The troglodytes that were... They ended up going back to the follow his followers, the lizard folk. So you might want to just warn him about that Uh... and be like, hey, they'd probably need some help. (laughs) Yeah, there is a, a a group of people who needs a new leader and uh, better organization and uh, fighting skills than they currently mm-hmm. have. That we directed to safety at your lizard folk friends. That's something I forgot, Anna. You find the stupid staff in the temple once you do the looting. The staffs at the temple. I, it, I there was no reason it wouldn't be. There, there, <gasps> no one like escaped the temple with it for any reason. Um. Yeah, I think unless okay. you would the troglodytes so you, you are give it out back, of under. Right? Okay, the troglodytes are out of underground though, and they clearly can't defend themselves and are bad at this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So it's, it's like it's up to you. Do we Anna? just give it to Nolan. Uh, to give it to them. Oh, that or sucks. Di- well, you you had a chance to give it back to them on your way back oh. to Far Shore, yeah. right? I, I, it's totally up to you, Anna. You can be nice okay. again. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Remind me. Is this... Is the staff of cultural importance to them, or is it just important because it was going to help them survive the underground where they were living? Um, I think it had cultural importance to them. No! <laughs> but it, Why? it wasn't... I don't think we emphasized that too much. The thing that we talked about was mainly oh yeah yeah no no it was like a whole thing about like this this had been like before the the religion because yeah because it's tied to their god that the god before he was corrupted remember uh and it was like <laughs> you know this is you know i think this is what we're gonna do anna anna would be nice and go yeah, bring this back I but would. i think i think i will give it to you uh the troglodyte guy is going to say now that you've we freed the island from demons, like you have done us a service already, like this is yours, right? For yeah, me, he'll give it to you. Yep. <gasps> and surprise, what? surprise! It also has a deck of many things inside of it. <laughs> I pull seven cards. <laughs> Goodbye, no. everyone. It's been nice knowing you. I I think that especially because Anna, as a character, gave it back twice. <laughs> I think we should reward Emily with the staff. Um, and that seems like oh a really fun gosh. thing to get as, as the end of that arc, right? Okay, what's the official staff again? It does require attunement, though, so you, <laughs> you might have to I'll give up. I'll figure it out. To be I'm fair, s- you, had the, you had the plus one staff. You can, does that you go? You can also about? bring it that to your require quadrant and be like, hey, is there a way that you can, like, magic these things? <laughs> to do to what? These things? Oh. Like uh, I don't know, maybe I could uh, take the, the the staff she has and take the the magic of the new staff and kind of you know make magic happen. So it's yeah, just one I super. I don't awesome. think you're going to be able to do that while making it not require attunement, right? That's the big thing. No, but, but I mean, like the one she currently has doesn't she have to attune to the one she already has? No, no it's just uh, a plus one quarter staff. Okay, no. wait, what's the new one called again? It's a staff of thunder and lightning. Very very frightening. Me? Mama Mia. It's a plus two staff. Uh, when you hit with a melee attack using the staff, you can you can cause the target to take an extra 2d6 lightning damage. When you hit with a melee attack using the staff, you can cause the staff to emit a crack of thunder audible to up to 300 feet. The target you hit must succeed on a DC 17 constitution saving throw or become stunned until the end of their next turn. Uh, you can use an action to cause a bolt of lightning to leap from the staff's tip in a line that is five feet wide and 120 feet long. Each creature in that line must make a DC 17 dexterity saving throw, taking 96 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful <laughs> one. You can use an action to cause the staff to issue a deafening thunderclap audible up to 600 feet. Each creature within 60 feet of you must make a DC 17 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, there's 2d6 thunder damage becomes deafened for one minute. Uh, light, well, you can use an action to There's do so many things. There's so time. many things. It's the staff of many things. Oh my right. gosh. I don't, uh, I, I put this out of my mind how many cool things it could do because I knew I <laughs> couldn't keep it. it so does like say I when, forgot when one, how cool it was. Yeah, it says one of these, when one of these properties is used, it can't be used again until the next dawn. Yeah, but it's, okay, even if it had none of the cool stuff, it's a plus two staff instead of a plus yeah. one. 
Yeah. So it's already better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this feels like a pretty fun staff for uh, Anna to have too because of the uh, like dragon stuff that she has going on, right? Just an aspect of that. Oh my gosh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> my bene- benevolent DM has, <laughs> has gifted Dobby a sock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like the more Dobby I thought about it, there's just, free. <laughs> there's just no reason that like you wouldn't find it and it feels like with everything that happened with the truck like guy he would probably just be like you just take this <laughs> i'm i suck <laughs> it all worked out <laughs> and i got the weapon after all i yep. got the uh, weapon i really wanted mm-hmm. and i got the weapon i deserved not the weapon i i was searching for mm-hmm. yep. the weapon mm-hmm. i got to keep mm-hmm. and not get stabbed for I mean, you probably would have kept it and just kept working for the Lady of Pain if this had been your choice. You I think? mean, we'd have to have seen what happened. We can't know. That's uh, what a whole you... different world. Yeah. What are you I have it, out? Like, right? Take Wait and Audrey and I feel like are the only two people that would have refused an offer from the Lady of Pain. I feel like Anna would have said yes because under the guise of like, right, I'm, I'm working for the, you yes. know, I'm doing Father Valentine's. And then stuff, Ren yeah. is just like, we get to stick it to your sisters? Heck yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, Vren would do it partially that and partially would be like, I want to see if I can get out of this contract. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. That's I want to take this power and see how quickly I can bail. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, what what are you getting rid of, Anna, then? Are you gonna swap um, out? I don't know. I got to think about it. Let's see. I have... I can't get rid of the periaptive wound closure. That no, saved me don't. simply too many times to count so i have to either get rid of my probably my stone of good luck which just gives me plus one on everything yeah because like i like my bracers of defense if i get rid of that my ac 16 Ooh, yeah don't and that's just like real low so i think i'm getting rid of my my stone of good luck does if anybody has open attunement slots, you can have a plus one to everything. No, I actually don't. I don't have think anyone does. written down on Vren for some reason, but I'm pretty sure I'm full too. Goodbye, uh, Surge, beautiful. Surge could probably take it. Yeah. Oh, Surge could actually use it. Yeah. That yeah. Actually, would so, be helpful. So yeah, if he wants it, he can attune to it. Take us. Take a stone of good luck. I'm gonna delete it from my character sheet if he's taking it. Sounds good the plus one to like all of his ability checks? All ability checks and saving throws. That's why it's like so good. Caleb, are you adding it or do you want me to? I just did, yeah. Great. It is deleted. Wow, that's what I got at the beginning with my money that we saved up when we first went shopping. Mm, yeah, yeah. I got my goggles of night and then my stone of good luck. Um, uh, that is a question. Do we want to buy anything from Farshore while we're here? Uh, Farshore has very little very to little. offer you. Um, That's true. I th- yeah, I, I think any major shopping you're going to do, we'll have to wait until we'll Scuttle, Scuttle Cove. Cove. Okay. Is there anything yeah. like potions or whatnot, or even not even that? We Probably. got some like greater they've been healing. Used. Like some- there's a there's a limited amount of stuff here, and I think you bought it already, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Either we bought it or we used it during the huge defense yeah. of the city yep. and i'm sure they haven't been able to build up their yeah. stores again yep how's uh, uh, cool. how's, how does how's benedict feel like now that he's no longer feeble-minded he's fine yeah he's feeling good um i, I mean he he's bummed that he like it's, it's like you know he he did all he could do he i feel like you know he feels slightly bad about it but honestly everything worked out and it was fine so he's probably not feeling too guilty is if if like someone had died because he couldn't heal them then that's one thing but you know right. it was fine sure. it worked out he'll get over any lingering guilt uh cool how are you ad- approaching the uh attack on scuttle cove oh Oh, actually, wait, real quick, Caleb. Question. I have to ask something real quick. Yeah. How expensive would you say this silverware I stole it was? Probably pretty expensive. Awesome. Because you know what? There's a certain spell called Plane a- Shift that has a component of a forked metal rod worth at least 250 GP. 
So you took a spoon. You, but I could actually. You, you I was took a say, fork instead. If I took a fork <laughs> instead, this is literally enough for me to play shift back. If I had played shift, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> We can take uh, that's that's why I was like, this spoon, it's expensive, right? And then you're like, I need a forked piece of metal. <laughs> well, I was like, the idea, so I have the, this the idea spoon. Is like, the idea is like to cut it a little it bit. It is a, a spork, spork now. now. It's easier to just say you, you took a fork. I took a fork. Yeah. But yeah, I can now plane shift City of Doors. As I'd have to switch out a spell because I don't have plane shift currently, but it is a sorcerer spell. And I could give the fork to Delhi, and then she could go there whenever she wanted. Mm-hmm. I'm just imagining, like, you do this, and then you just hear, intruder alert, intruder alert, intruder alert. And then Vryn's there looking like her sister. (laughs) Oh, so Vryn has a death wish. (laughs) No, he just thinks he's smarter than he probably is. We can have someone do a history check on Scuttle Cove to see what you know about it as a start. Right? Would... I can help Audrey Would Vryn have been sent with any information on it, honestly? Probably not, no. No? Okay. Madoc was a little too busy making oranges. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Like he was Audrey busy. has a pretty good chance of knowing quite a bit about Scuttle Cove. Actually, I was going to say, if Madoc was busy with anything, it was making sure that that contract was airtight. Yeah, exactly. Yep. He's like, I know what I'm dealing with here with Vryn. Mm-hmm. Can I give uh, Audrey a Arctic while we sure. do this history check. Yep, on yep. Scuttle Cove. As you guys were planning your, your trip. For the record, I do have the highest history, right? That's not yeah. up for debate. You have a plus. Um, I, so. no, I, have a I now have a two in history. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's <laughs> let's have let's have Anna roll it. Wait, really? No. <laughs> no. Don't. I was like, well, I was like, wait a second. I thought you actually had history. <laughs> Whoa! Critical oh. success. Okay, roll it. Roll that yeah. Bardic. Bar- roll that Bardic. Let's yeah, get nice. 35. 35. 35. Let's go. Five. Redemption. Redemption, do I, yes. Do I also get my uh, guidance with this? Um, uh, Sure, why not? 33. Where if you roll 30, another five, one, I'm going to like... 35. 35. <laughs> Come on. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Redemption! Yay. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, so this makes sense, right? Um, uh, Audrin, you've probably known all of this stuff about Scuttle Cove for a long time, yeah. right? Um, you lived here for a while. Um, you know everything there is to know about Scuttle Cove. So we get the heist music. Uh, where um, you know, <laughs> we see Audrin lay down a map of Scuttle Cove, and he's like, "All right, everyone, right? Like, here's what we know." <laughs> and then, like, we we start getting the montage music. Um, so you know, uh, Audrin, that Scuttle Cove has six factions. Um, there is the Crimson Fleet. They serve Demogorgon. They provide to the city violence. Um, right. Um, their thugs are used as uh as they they you know um offer protection to people. They um yeah they they do blackmail and stuff like for with protection money um they are the toughs and the you know the scallywags of um the of scuttle cove um you also have the uh nightshade syndicate um they uh serve a mysterious um benefactor um that you you've never heard a name of but um the um the people who uh populate the um, sorry, what were they again? I'm trying to write these down. We're going too yeah. fast. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll. So obviously you know the Crimson Fleet, but then there's the Nightshade Syndicate. Um, they are mostly populated by um, uh, I'm trying to think of what you actually know of this because there's there's some secrets here that I don't think even Audrin would know. Um. You know that they are, they they usually are a populated, the, the members that you have uh, interacted with are elves. Um, they uh, are the drug dealers of the city, um, right? They provide all the all the fun drugs for the um, That's scoundrels. That's nice shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's also uh, a organization known as the Hopping Prophets. Um, they have a strange... Uh, fascination with um, st- extraplanar beings known as Slad, Slad Eye. Um, Those oh, freaking guys! The Slad. Yeah. Uh, They're they, the ones uh, that poison Delhi. 
Yep, yep. They they provide weird arcane arc, arcana stuff to people in in Scuttle Cove, right? Like you go there if you need a weird ritual or some sort of magic item. Um, but yeah, they they uh, they they uh, are one of the factions that vie for control in Scuttle Cove. There's also the Blood Sisters. Uh, All yeah. right, they serve they serve the Lady of Pain. Uh, they are the uh, the prostitutes of the Scuttle Cove, right? They provide sexual favors. They also Don't worry, are the people guys, who... I got us an in. <laughs> right. They also uh, are the people who like you send the prostitutes that uh, secretly assassinate the dudes that they sleep with, right? Like that's also uh, something that that happens there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they they that run costs like, the, extra though. Yeah, <laughs> so they run the brothels, right? Um, there's uh, the the seventh coil, um, which uh, you would know uh, at this point. Like uh, you, you have a hunch. You, you you never knew exactly what sort of people were there. They always seemed slightly clammy skinned individuals. But you have your your uh, um, hunch now. Your your uh, what's the word I'm looking for? suspicions that this is actually a, a cadre of yon of yuan t um given your y- y- how you've interacted with tanak you think that the seventh coil is a yuan t uh um organization some some of the, probably the bad yuan t that still exist in right. the setting right i can't wait to um, kill them all yeah <laughs> uh, they provide the poisons right uh of uh the city, right? The any any sort of uh, snaky sort of poison stuff. Um, they do some, assass- some assassinations too. Uh, and then there is a secret organization that um no one knows a whole lot about. Um, that you know has had influence in um Scuttle Cove in the past. And I think honestly, this is this is the one that you uh didn't know about before. Um, they, they don't, I don't think they, they were a player as much, uh, in Scuttle Cove when you lived there, but in, this is like also, I think probably some research that you're doing, um, with whatever resources you have at Far Shore, um, and whatever you can get through spells or whatever else you have access to. Um, you think that the verdict has taken up residence in Scuttle Cove and, and started influencing I don't like them stuff. either. I literally hate everyone here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh my god. This is, this is literally hate... the oh city god. of evil people. That's what oh. it is, right? I know, but it's literally every organization I, I hate yeah. so yep. much. Yep. Uh, I can't wait to Caleb. burn this place to the ground. Mm-hmm. I know the perfect like music that needs to play as we're headed there. Yeah. It, like in the movie version of this. Mm-hmm. We need Bat Country by Avenged Sevenfold. Okay, so I post it in chat and we'll 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 have to listen. Um but yeah, the, the verdict uh, serves someone known only as him. Um and they provide information, right? They are the secret brokers of Scuttle Cove. Um, just... Oh my gosh, this totally makes sense why Sayori was there. Uh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're freaking gonna make freaking my he, least he come back. I just know way be, he's gonna be here because like he's gonna. There's no freaking way he's gonna let me escape her. <laughs> she always just freaking comes oh back. She can't freaking die. <laughs> Run around her dies and she can't freaking die. You, you also know, uh, Audrin, that um, two two factions that uh, have enclaves there but aren't like major players. Uh, the Order of the Bitter Curtain is there. Uh, you you probably get this mainly from Mickey. Uh, from from Mickey. Uh, slash Mikhail. Um, oh. So he, he basically tells you like that might be a safe haven that you can find. Um, they're pretty secretive there. Like um, you'll have to like do some digging to find the hideout. But like um, it, he, he's going to try to send an agent your way and, and try to get you involved uh, with them if you need their help uh, with anything. Um, and then also the collectors have a have a presence there as well. Um, they usually have a presence everywhere. But uh, so that, that'll be a faction you could get in touch with as well. And then obviously the Order of St. Cuthbert is there too, right? Uh, no. Right? <laughs> There's pretty much no reason for them to be there. Uh, there, oh. this is the, this is the first, you're the first missionary. Yeah, yeah, like, like, you could, Saint you could try An to get in touch. undercover missionary. <laughs> you could try to get, like, so the, the Order of St. Cuthbert does work with the Order of the Bitter Curtain. They have mm-hmm. done missions with them in the past. So if we wanted to, like, to, to get in your honor guard thing, we could have you do a contact through that, right? Like, talk to the Order of the Bitter Curtain and try to get some information to uh, get some word to to Father Valentine or whoever else that can give you your honor guard, right? Um, you, you can you can definitely pursue that while you're in Scuttle Cove. Mm-hmm. Um, so you I know mean, that I can just yeah. have. 
Benedict has sending. That's what we've been saying the whole time. It's like, if I need to say anything to Father Valentine, yep. Benedict yep. can just be like, hey, Father Valentine, guess what? Anna has now completed many tasks. Yeah. And it's Hon- an- honestly, we can assume that that's happened behind the scenes yeah. at this point, I think is what we've said, right? Like, um, so we can, we can kind of set up that, uh, for when we actually go to Scuttle Cove, uh, Emily, we can, we can figure out what those people are, who those pe- people are and, um, w- how they join your party or whatever. Right. Um, yes. you can, you can send them on errands and stuff. <laughs> um, so, so, uh, Jordan, you would know that, uh, Audra would know that, um, the Crimson Fleet and the Seventh Coil are probably the, the people who have the most influence in the city. Um, they're, they're the people, the main organizations that are kind of vying for power, um, uh, have the most influence. Um, you need to find the Crimson Fleet. Uh, you don't know where their secret base is in the city. Uh, you don't know, um, how to get access to that information. You, you, you know, places to start looking once you get to Scuttle Cove, like you, you will be able to pick up those threads but the this 35 does not like give you all of the secrets um of like uh where to go and there's stuff. not a secret passage that goes directly to delhi yeah. you don't know anything like that um would you have any other questions for me as to how you would want to plan your strategy here what, what you need to know jordan uh yeah i'm thinking i i actually think i already have a plan uh yeah. and then it may or may not involve Getting thrown in jail. <laughs> okay. Oh god. Okay. It, okay. Is there a jail system there? Um. No. <laughs> okay. Like there. There's not. A, there's I think not you'd a. Probably just government. die. <laughs> well, like you. If you get put in jail, like there's jails and prisons, but even all the factions have their own prisons, right? There's there's not a government of Scuttle Cove that will put you in. Prison. I don't think anybody goes to prison. I think they just kill anybody who. Yeah, they, they'll who either they have kill you with, or you throw know. you in their particular cells to torture you and then probably kill you later. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, there's um, not a government. It's it's pure anarchy, right? They're just yeah. lying for power. So, like, uh, you know, there, there's there's certainly, like, um, enforcement that happens in each district uh, according to the faction's whims, but there is not a government of Scuttle Cove. There's which six gov- faction? There's six governments of Scuttle Coves. Which, which faction is the most against the Crimson Fleet? Bitter Curtain. Uh, well, I yeah, I mean, say- obviously that um, they don't have enough influence to really count as a pure uh, like a, a faction that has influence in the city. Uh, uh, in terms of the, the seventh six, coil, seventh, seventh coil is definitely vying for power with them, so that's probably the right answer. Um, let me let me double take a look at the list again. Um, yeah, it's probably not the hopping prophets. They probably work together, if anything. Um, probably not the. I don't know if the blood sisters care that much. Um, yeah, I think the seventh coil or maybe the verdict. My thought is if I can get thrown into a prison with other Crimson Fleet, like other Crimson Fleet people who are like captured by whatever faction then i could get them like oh yeah you know i've been captured too and get them to spill the beans Hmm. on crimson fleet stuff so given your 35 here jordan um i don't think you think that you could set up a situation like that um and with with the sort of people that would be able to give you anything beyond the 35 history check you rolled, right? Like the people okay. you'd be put in prison with are going to be lackeys. Okay. Don't worry. Well, don't worry. I have an well, idea no. for a prison thing. I know that you want to do a prison thing. I have an idea for a prison thing. Okay. Uh, in, okay. In, a, in a later adventure. Okay. But you'll, uh, you'll be able to break Delhi out. That, that'll still be a prison thing. That, that'll work. That, that works for me. Um, so... I'm trying to think of any other questions I might have. Um, mm-hmm. When we're rowing into port, what are we going to have to like? You might want to disguise your ship somehow. You you might be yeah. able to, to, to pretend you're pirates, right? 
to be fair, like you, you captured a pirate ship. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. It and, was right, so that's what I was... That, and technically was the, the Sea Wyvern that, is one of their pirate ships, <laughs> originally. So, yeah, that's what I was going to ask, was which ship are we taking? Because I feel like one I think of them get, might be recognizable. I think the Sea Wyvern is probably the best bet, um, because it's it, it was slightly um, one step away from the Crimson Fleet, whereas like one of the ships that they sent too far shore would probably be suspicious. Um, yeah. I, I think you could, with the, with the paraphernalia you have from the other ships and the information you could get from the pirates you captured and, like, tried to reform, right? Like, lefty. Um, Booth, Booth Crane. Uh, <laughs> Booth Lefty Crane. Um, you could probably disguise yourself as pirates and pretend to, to be Crimson Fleet members and, and try to go in that way. Okay. I don't know how definitely... I'm going to disguise myself through this town. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep my hood up, like, the whole time. I mean, it's not unheard of for a fire genasi to be, like, it's not like they're a monolithic people who hate uh, hate the Crimson Fleet or anything. No, but they're just not super common over here. Yeah. Uh, mainly, I, I think it would be less about fire genasi specifically, and more about you specifically. If you, right. you are known specifically <laughs> for being a demon hunter, right? Oops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me yeah, I wonder that. how Vren's gonna see. disguise himself. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Audrin will be fine. Vren will be fine. I'll just put some makeup and fake lashes on. I'll be <laughs> fine. Yeah, I feel like I just like gotta like go, my hair is normally like in a braid, so I just gotta like pin it up and then like pop a hood up. That's like yeah, so <laughs> with my glowing hair in the background. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Audrin, um, you, there are a couple of thoughts that have come to your mind with that 35 history, like as you're thinking through like how to approach this. Um, you could find a cove uh, nearby the city and just go on a rowboat like towards the city and not worry about your ship being Robo, overrun by you anyone. you say? <laughs> yeah. Or you could, like if you did decide to park the Sea Wyvern, um, to dock the Sea Wyvern in the docks of Scuttle Cove, you would have to worry about like curious thugs on the docks or people trying to you know blackmail you uh, any anyone dangerous who might try to aboard your ship and steal something something like that um so those are those are two possibilities um either way the sea wyvern is probably a good place to like store your gear and have a safe place to like rest yeah i think i want to uh i want to keep it off shore and just use a rowboat sure um I wish we could do some sort of like magic ship in a bottle thing where we could just like pack it up and <laughs> take it with us. That is pretty cool. That's certainly a magic item you could create if you had enough time, but you don't. Enlarge but we don't have time, system. Caleb. Yeah. That's the yeah. point. <laughs> Ajun's ready for us to finish this adventure so he could retire and make cool magic items. <laughs> it's his dream. Audrin's first priority right now after rescuing Delhi is not that, but that is something he would like to do eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, mean, I have a different... list of priorities. Mm -hmm. There's different places that you could attempt to find information um, and like uh, start your search, right? Because like the yeah. main, th the, your main three goals in scuttle cove would be like find and rescue delhi and or lavinia if she's here you're like you're not entirely sure if lavinia was taken here too that's a possible that's a big possibility this is where the crimson fleet is based like that, that makes sense um so like find out where those people are being held captive um find out if you know because like you guys know that like all the shadow pearls were sent here but i don't know if you know where they went if anywhere beyond that. So that's another thing, like find out what happened to the shadow pearls. If you can like gather them up again or like stop them somehow. And then three, destroy the crimson fleet question mark, right? You could just kill them. <laughs> like just, just take them down. Finally. Are the well, shadow pearls just conveniently being sold in the middle of a black market. So we could just buy them all. Maybe. Look, if we just get the shadow pearls and gather all seven of them and summon the shadow dragon. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Wow, you no, figured actually, out the secret of the campaign. <laughs> if we, uh, if we, if we, no, no, it's not a shadow dragon. It's a, it, oh, oh, frick, what were they? The, the void dragons. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Exchange your wish. No, um, if we could, if we could get that, like a whole bunch of them 
and then just like light them off and run in the in the Crimson Fleet base. <laughs> yes, sure. You could set off a shadow pearl in Scuttle Cove. <laughs> That's one way of doing that. Yes, and not, not, si- no, 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 not a shadow pearl, Caleb. All, all of the shadow. <laughs> Sure, sure. If you can find all the shadow pearls in Scuttle Cove and set them all simultaneously. Here we go. Here we go. You guys find me a deck of money things. (laughs) Ren teleports Ren teleports everybody else away to the door plane, whatever Mm. it's called. Sigil. Then I pull ten cards. And I destroy Scuttle Cove. That's a possibility. (laughs) <laughs> except for the part where you need a deck of many things and the fact that that was know, the step for, that was the first step did you see it's, at <laughs> Scuttle Cove. it's a deck of many things yeah it is clearly at scuttle cove come on i mean hey of, that, of all the I places are, i would sell yeah. it that would probably how be much it. money do we have <laughs> not enough for a deck of many things i can we tell have, you that. Hey, but like, gold. come on but like as somebody who owns the deck of many things interested in uh, bargaining uh, two not in, copper pieces no <laughs> not in bargaining <laughs> interested in a lovely romantic night with Anna <laughs> oh a beautiful my blood gosh. sister uh, <laughs> we're gonna yep. prostitute yep, yep, yep. we're gonna prostitute murder somebody for a deck of many things so Anna can destroy <laughs> the world uh, let me double check I'm it's- just a girl 200,000 gold for a deck of many things. Oh my god. I require very little. I'm just a girl. (laughs) Very little. I have simple wants and needs. Yeah, yeah. I need a deck of many things. I want to kill for it, but I don't have to. (laughs) All right, so... Yeah, so what's the plan? I think we need to... uh, Okay, so... We get the ship decked out in disguise. We disguise ourselves. And I think we also need to stock up on supplies while we're there. Like, get anything that we could that could possibly help us. In Scuttle Co., you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, go go shopping first. That's your first thing on the agenda. <laughs> well, go shopping before you make enemies. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Like, if especially if you're showing up as like people who should belong in Scuttle Cove, like that's that's your your yeah, uh, and, front. and in the show up to buy stuff. We're, yeah, we're using that time as we're buying stuff to like try to gather information, figure that out like a great what our next steps are. Yeah, yeah, love we're it. definitely parking the ship away from Scuttle Cove. We hide yeah, it. That's fine. Um, can't wait for you to destroy that robot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, I'll, sure. I'll have a Kraken attack you on the way to into the dock. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we make it perfectly safely, but the rowboat is scuttled. <laughs> That's why they call it Scuttle Co. Audrin dies. <laughs> he just explodes. That's the first time you've killed someone besides me for a bad joke. That is not true. Audrin explodes. <laughs> and has died 52 so many times. Oh, beautiful cards <laughs> set up into yep. a deck that many things are in. Wow. <laughs> so true. What are those things? I don't know. So true. Okay. Do, hear me out. K- Caleb, I have a new idea for your Patreon. <laughs> okay. For the after show. We should start every after show with a what if. If if Anna suddenly found the deck of many things, we just have a church raw one. Yeah, right now. Yeah. At the, at the end yeah, of yeah. yeah, the beginning of every after show, we just have her draw from the deck of many things. And be like, <laughs> if Anna had drawn it right then, what would have happened? What would have happened? That is a pretty fun idea. That would be fun. I'd be down for that. What happened? Uh, cool. Yeah, but that, that that is a good place to kind of um, set up for next time, um, right? Like the plan is to go there, do shopping, and while shopping, do some gathering of information. I can fill you guys in. I can give you some a milieu, right? We can we can kind of fill in the the how what Scuttle Cove is like. We can we can get some sights and sounds. Um, we can start 
uh, maybe you get into a fight with someone who's you rub you rub the wrong way. You know, we we can kind of introduce Scuttle Cove that way, and then from there, yeah, we whatever role you manage to make and succeed on or fail, uh, we can send you guys off in a direction. And you can you can also use the time um, before or after shopping to touch in to to get in touch with factions um, that you're interested in getting in touch with. Um, so that that sounds like a good place to start for next time. Is like you arrive at Scuttle Cove, you start shopping and doing faction stuff. Uh, I have, and gathering information in the meantime. I have one thing that I'm going to message you privately right now of okay. something Audrey's going to work on on the way to Scuttle, Scuttle Cove. Okay, perfect. Uh, anyone else have anything else? Or uh, can we I don't think so. Uh, uh, just keep in mind we have about a little over 30,000 gold to work with. You yes. know, so if you want to buy something, you know, that's like 5,000 5, gold. Like I was thinking about upgrading my shield. Mm-hmm. Kind of a thing. You can also you sell some stuff that. if you have extra magic items that you don't want to don't use. Right. Like I'll, I'll so. trade up my shield to you know, uh, yeah, so I can get some more armor. Class. Part part of me is reluctant to do anything too much with Bren right now, given the situation. I also don't know what he would get. Yeah. If we're gonna be on Scuttle Cove for a little bit, I might yeah. invest some money in clothing and jewelry, like actually mm. like clothing jewelry like Blood makeup to fit in yeah hey you know what we're gonna oh, yeah, be- that, that's actually one thing one of the things that i wanted to do uh when this season is get a costume change for everybody right like let's 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 describe how people and this will be a good opportunity like just while you're in scuttle cove right like what what is your scuttle cove costume right what skin are we unlocking here um as you guys are infiltrating um and so we can evolve the characters that way as, as well mm. I like it. Cool. Well, we can honestly uh, go ahead and call it there, and then we can talk shopping and mm-hmm. faction stuff uh, in the after show, and figure out what you guys want to do there, and talk about whatever else you would like to talk about. Uh, but yeah, this adventure will be in in Scuttle Cove. That's the plan, right? the The adventure is called Serpents of Scuttle Cove. So that is um, both both literal and metaphorical serpents. Cue you know? Taylor Swift's <laughs> Reputation album. All right, all right. Sounds good. Post that in chat so we have the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. That's been Tara and Victor. Thanks for playing, guys. Uh, fun start to the season. I'm excited for uh, what is in store. Uh, I was wondering if you guys were going to like bring along Damien and the others and go through a door and just show up at Scuttle Cove, but uh, I, I like this better. I like that you guys are on your own, doing your own thing again. Uh, it's fun. You still got some NPCs to drag around, so. We have Surge and Benedict. So. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm sure that Surge won't ruin any sort of disguise that you decide to do in Scuttle Cove. Surge That'll will be great. Stay with the sh- Surge will stay with the ship and guard. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing you can do. All right, cool. We'll go ahead and call it there and do an after show. Adios. <laughs>